Welcome home to Underserved Favor Ministry. We are making Jesus, God's love and grace, known to the world. A blessed day, church. Welcome to our online Sunday service. And as we gather today, let's continue to be reminded of our Abba Father's goodness and unfailing love. Amen. So to get this started, why don't we prepare our hearts to worship with a prayer? Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us to gather online and celebrate your love and grace towards us. We are grateful for the lives of our online volunteers who facilitate the service today and for our pastors whom you use as your mouthpiece so we can get to know you more in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the revelation we will receive today from your word. And may we apply it in our lives so we can continue to grow and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So church, let's get ready to praise and worship. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Amen. So wherever you may be, stand up and just come before the Lord today with your voices raised and let's all give him praise I come before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say thank you Lord thank you've given to me saying for all you've given to me for all the blessings that I cannot see thank you Lord thank you Lord with a grateful heart with a song of praise with an outstretched arm how bless your name thank you lord i just want to thank you lord sing thank you lord thank you lord i just want to thank you lord thank you lord i will sing forever for all that you've done in my life Come on, let's sing. For all you've done in my life, you took my darkness and gave me a light. Thank you, Lord. Sing, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my sin and my shame. Yes, you did. You took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Sing, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now with a grateful heart, everybody sing. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, how bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Sing, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, 
I just want to thank you, Lord. Now with a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, how bless your name. come to an important part in our gathering, the communion. Please make sure that you have your communion elements with you. Before we partake, let us be reminded that on the night before Jesus was betrayed, He gathered all of His disciples in an upper room where He took the bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to His disciples and said, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which shall be broken for you. Do this as often and remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again gave thanks. Give it to his disciples and said, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for the forgiveness of all sins. Do this as often and remembrance of me. So the bread that you are holding right now represents Jesus' body, which was broken for our healing, and the cup represents Jesus' blood, which he willingly shed for the forgiveness of all sins. So together, let us raise the bread and declare, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. Your broken body made me whole. By your wounds, I am healed. I receive it right now healing wholeness for my entire body from my head down to my toes i am made whole i am healed in jesus name thank you jesus for loving me amen you may eat the bread let us raise the cup and declare with faith lord jesus your perfect blood wash away all my sins perfectly. So today, I receive your righteousness by your blood, and I receive the life of favor that comes from you alone. Thank you, Jesus. I love you too. Amen. You may drink the cup. We have just partaken the communion. God bless you always. goodness in all my life. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath the good. 
goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend Oh, I have lived In the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful Oh, yes, you have All my life you have been so We know that after the worship, you're even more excited to give your tithes and offering. But please be reminded that the giving of tithes and offering comes from revelation that Jesus is truly alive in our lives. It's an act of faith and a privilege. So don't feel obliged if you don't have that revelation yet. But be excited because God will reveal it to you in His perfect time. For those who have that revelation and we not act out of faith, then there's nothing that will stop the floodgates of heaven to open as our Father in heaven has revealed everything for you. If you intended to give your tithes and offering through fund transfer, please indicate your name in the remarks field so that our pastors can pray for you. With this, we invite you to raise your hand, your mobile gadget, or envelope for a prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. You are an abundant God, and out of your abundant grace, you have given everything. As we have seen you multiply little to many, turn water into wine, we have seen you move our mountains. We are confident 
that as we give our tithes, you will do it again. You will extend and multiply its reach. We thank you for blessing us that we may be a blessing to others as just Jesus is our blessing. In his mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that wonderful praise and worship experience. And thank you, Jesus, as well, for the privilege to be reminded of his finished work through our communion. And of course, for the overflowing blessings that he has given us that allows us to give through tithes and offering. Now, church, if you're new here, we are inviting you to join us in our online communities. We are now in Telegram, so if you don't have Telegram yet, please download it and search UFM Community in Telegram's public channel. Or you may scan the QR code now flash in your screen. All you need to do is actually subscribe to it. Also, continue supporting our online platforms by sharing our content from both Facebook and YouTube. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you will be notified when our videos are uploaded already. See you on our online platforms and catch the word daily and get exclusive links to our videos. Church, today we hear the testimony of a sister in Christ who reflects on her journey back to a deeper relationship with God. She shares, I grew up serving in church and found joy in teaching Bible school, volunteering, and attending youth camps. But over the past five years, while working in Metro Manila, I became so focused on my career that I neglected my relationship with God, filling my time with hobbies, concerts, and material things in search of happiness. Earlier this year, I reflected on my life and realized I was spiritually deteriorating. I asked myself when I last felt truly happy. And my thoughts returned to the times I lived with my family and served in church. Back then, my heart was full and I felt deeply connected to God. After months of internal struggle, I decided to return home. My first Sunday back at church was overwhelming. I cried during the service, feeling a heavy burden lifted from my heart. And it was as if God himself embraced me in a warm hug, reminding me that he had never left me. Shortly after, I joined a Christian company where, where the daily devotions reminded me of God's unchanging love. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30 spoke deeply to me. Come to me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. It felt like God has orchestrated every step of my journey back to Him. Today, I feel like a puzzle piece has finally found its place. This work feels like home, and I'm so thankful to be back where I belong. God has shown me that even when I drifted, He never left me. His love and grace brought me home. If you're feeling distant from God, I encourage you to trust Him. No matter how far you've gone, His grace is enough, and His arms are always open to welcome you back. Amen and Amen, beloved. This testimony reminds us that God's love is truly unchanging, and His arms are always open to welcome us back. So, church, let us trust His grace and take that step back to Him today. Amen. So, beloved, to continue being reminded how blessed and loved we are by our Abba Father, let's together declare who we are in Christ. I am in Christ my Savior. I am righteous because of Christ. I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. I am a winner. I am blessed to be a blessing. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Amen and amen. Church, that is who you are and more of who you are in Christ coming up. So, let's go and enjoy the word. Blessed Sunday, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us today in this amazing day of worship and thanksgiving to our God. Are you ready for your revelation? When I was in fourth year high school, at the beginning of the school year, just right after summer, I met with my classmate, first day of class. 
he was bringing this big card it was laminated and he was refreshing himself with that card and so i asked him what is that card and i saw in the card it wrote there at the top philippine airlines i said how did you get this and my classmate told me we went to manila last summer and i took this from the airplane i said wow you rode an airplane man <laughs> i've never been to an airport <laughs> much less ride an airplane amazing and i was just so amazed that he was able uh, he and his family you know was able to ride an airplane that summer and beginning the time i prayed lord i desire i dream of riding an airplane and of course connected to that is i desire to go to places different places especially in the philippines and you know what guys a few years later actually after college you now when i started to work in a multinational company i traveled <laughs> as in like every single month for the next about two years you know? Uh, when i started working uh, as an internal auditor of that company i was traveling practically all over the philippines every single month i was riding on an airplane amen <laughs> thank you jesus so it was an answered prayer a granted desire so looking back i said wow you're an amazing lord no god you're so amazing you granted my heart's desire it was it was not even a desire that, you know, will make an impact on people's lives. It was just a desire because, you know, I wanted to ride on an airplane and even travel to places and yet granted that desire. So, brothers and sisters, I think a very important question right now is, how does God grant desires? How God makes your desires come true? How does he make that happen? You want your desires, your dreams to be granted, to come true, that God will work on them and make them come true for you? Then, of course, it starts with the heavenly life. You need to have a heavenly life, an eternal life, in other words. no. And um, how do you have eternal life? Of course, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He gives you eternal life, right? And yet, what is eternal life? John 17, 3. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one who sent you sent to earth. So this is eternal life, knowing Jesus, no? knowing God, the only true God, and Jesus whom God sent. The moment you acknowledge and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you get, you receive eternal life from within. So that's the amazing part, no? Heavenly life is an eternal life and that is through jesus christ if you want god to grant your desires you need to be a new creation in christ and live the eternal life that's the only way right the more you know god the more you know jesus you will realize more and more that god loves you so much you will realize that for sure you will realize that in the bible especially in the new testament in the new covenant it has been so expressed you know, the love of god that's why john 3 16 is, is like the central message of the new covenant for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life we start to live live out eternal life a heavenly life by knowing god the father who loves you so much and jesus your savior no, that's that's the start when you know that love you start to love god in return that's an amazing effect of knowing god's love for you okay and that's very sure to happen no guaranteed yan kapatid you will learn to love and you will grow in your love as you grow in the knowledge of god and jesus that's why it's important that you read the word of God. You read the Bible. You listen to preachings that highlight the love of God for you. Because in that way, as you know God's love for you, you will grow in, the, in, in loving God also. No? So that's the natural effortless impact or effect on you when you know more of God's love. When you start knowing God 
when you start living the eternal life. Amen? Now, what would God do the moment He sees you loving Him in return? What do you think? You know, um, with my kids, I love them very much. Okay? And so, let's say, for example, I show my love by, you know, usually buying them, you know, something that they like. And they appreciate it, no? Uh, they embrace me. They say, thank you, daddy, like that. What happens? What do you think would I want to do after that? So this is, a, this is a secret that, you know, I'm telling all of you. Don't tell my kids. I will want to give them more. Yeah. The moment, you know, and, and it's a natural for a parent, no? When the, 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 the kids appreciate what the parents are doing, the more they would want to show love to the kids. And, and that's something natural. That's something innate. So, what do you think will God do when you appreciate, when you love Him in return because you appreciate, you recognize His love for you? What do you think will He do? Let's look at it in the Bible, okay? Psalm 37 verse 4, Take delight, in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desires. Wow, isn't that amazing, brothers and sisters? This verse emphasizes that when we find joy and satisfaction, you know, when we start wanting to be with God, you know, and having this uh, growing, intimate relationship, personal relationship with God, what happens? It says here, He will give you your heart's desires. How oh, amazing! That when you learn to love the Lord, you will want to be with Him. You delight to be in His presence. You love to pray to Him, to talk to Him. What will happen? It says there, when we have read, He will grant you the desires of your heart. In other words, whatever you desire, He will bring to you. Now you might find that the book of Psalm was written in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. And yet, God has not changed His ways on how He grants our desires. You will find in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, it's actually the same thing. The truth is the same. Let's read in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Wow! Did you see that, brothers and sisters? Jesus here talks about remaining, staying with, you know, with Jesus and His Word, letting His Word penetrate in your heart and in your mind you know, as you reflect about it, study it, hear about it, especially during Sunday service. And then He said here, ask. When you do that, when you remain, ask whatever you wish. Guys, what does that mean? Desires. And it will be done for you. Wow! The thing is, you will not remain with God, with Christ. You will not let His Word remain in you if you don't know that He loves you, right? If you don't know that God really cares for you, if you have no personal relationship with God, you will not remain. So, in this verse, in John 15, Jesus is saying He needs you to have this personal relationship with Him. He needs you to have a growing knowledge of God, of Jesus. You know, that's eternal life, right? And the growing understanding that God loves you so much. And that as you do that, you love Him in return and you will want to stay, right? And here's the amazing thing. When you remain, when you stay with God, when you delight yourself in the Lord, He grants you the desires of your heart. Ask whatever you wish. And it will be done for you. Come on, guys. Are you hearing this? Are you receiving this revelation? God is saying, all you need to do is remain with Him. And as you delight that moment, as you enjoy that moment, as you appreciate God's love for you, He will do more for you. He will grant you the desires of your heart. Are you getting this? Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful revelation. And of course... When you love someone, right? You will want to bless the person. You will want to make the person happy, right? 
and you will want you will not want something that will hurt the person am i correct i think you can relate right and here's the thing when you know more that god loves you the amazing part again is god will love you in return he will show you he will grant you your heart's desires and yet what about your desire what about your wishes what will you wish for i think it's obvious that because you love christ you love god when you wish for something you will want something that will make him happy right in other words it's a natural thing that because you are in christ you love god because you know he, he loves you so much also you and you spend your time with him you reflect about him you know him you will know him more of what god wants and what makes him happy naturally you will wish for something that will make him happy also right so in other words our desires this time in that given in that situation your desires will be aligned with god's desires with god's heart isn't that amazing so effortlessly you will just want to bless the lord as he blesses you you will want to make him happy as he makes you happy that's amazing no? that's the mechanics no, of, of how god works with us so this time now you will find and you will discover as you grow in that relationship with god in a more intimate relationship personal relationship is that you will start to align your desire according to god's heart you will want what god wants you will desire what makes god happy and i think if you have we have shared with you no um in the previous sermons that god wants to bless his people wants to bring his people back to him that's the heart of hearts of, of of god he wants his people to be reconciled back to him and if you desire for that aligning your desire your dreams along, along that line of bringing people to christ bringing back god's people to himself then surely my friend god will be so pleased and he will want to even do more for you whatever you ask whatever you wish it's done for you amen thank you jesus so remember this when you love god you align your desires with what makes him happy and he grants them wow so it's very clear when you align your desires it will make him happy and he will grant you your, your heart's desires but now going back to the original question how will he make your desires come true in what way will he make your dreams your desires come true by magic poof your desires granted that's it is that how god works or will god you know bring somebody um or touch somebody or you know just tell somebody to do something to bring your desires to your doorsteps what do you think well one thing for sure god will not work magic okay <laughs> he doesn't have to and definitely he will not manipulate people to do his will no or even to just move people manipulate people to bring you your heart's desires he will not do that so okay i'm closing with this very important answer to your question how will god make my desires come true okay learn this here's the principle he will make your desires come true through you did you hear that god will make your desires come true through you what does that mean isaiah 48 17 says thus says the lord your redeemer the holy one of israel i am the lord your god who teaches you to profit who leads you by the way you should go my friend did you see that your god your abba father is the one who teaches you to profit he teaches you. He does not just bring you the profit. All right? And it says there in the last line, who leads you by the way you should go. God teaches you how to receive the granted desires through you. 
Okay, so it is through you that he will work his power to grant you your heart's desires. And so if you remain, no, as Jesus said, if you remain with him and his words remain in you, what will happen? He will be able to lead you, guide you to profit. What's profit? It's making an abundance, an excess. No? Desires, wishes are even beyond your needs, your requirements. And so he teaches you not only to receive what you need, but even to receive the desires of your heart, the excess, the abundant life. He will lead you. He will guide you. That's what he's saying. So this is your God no? who teaches you to profit. So it is through you. Again, a very important truth and principle. It is through you. He will teach you how to profit. He will lead you in the way you should go. So how will, no? how will you receive? In what way will you receive the desires of your heart? If God will teach you and guide you to receive it, how will you receive it? Colossians 3 verses 23 to 24. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord and not for people, knowing that it is from the Lord that you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Did you see that? So if you work, the Bible, the verses, whatever you do, work heartily. No, Do your work heartily. Ask for the Lord. You're working for the Lord, not for people. Knowing. In other words, you are assured that it is from the Lord that you will receive the reward. So there's a reward. It, and in fact, it's not an ordinary reward. It's a reward of inheritance. It's not just a reward of compensation for work, but it's a reward of the inheritance. So this is beyond measure of whatever God has you receive. For it is the Lord Christ whom you serve. What does that tell you, my friend? Your work needs to be done heartily for the Lord. In one word, what, does that call, what do we call that? Excellent work you need to do an excellent work and excellence is not perfection okay excellence is giving your best effort wholeheartedly with commitment and dedication done for the lord of course that is excellence so what god wants is that you excel in all you do because you are doing it for the lord and here's the thing Remember, you are God's image and likeness. Your work reflects God's work. Okay? So whatever you do reflects God. So when you excel in your work, whatever you do, you have, you're dedicated, you're committed, and you're giving it your best. Like it is already for the Lord. What happens? It glorifies God because you reflect God. People will see God in you and will see the excellence of God in your work. So, it's very important that you have this commitment, this dedication, this wholehearted work, excellent work. And again, what will help you do the excellent work is that you're doing it for the Lord. You know it's for Him, it's not for people. So, you're working as an employee, you're working as a businessman, you're working as a student, whatever your state of life is, whatever you're working for. Don't work for people. Don't even work for yourself. Work for the Lord. And you will find when you know that your work goes beyond, okay? Goes beyond yourself, goes beyond people because it's a God-sized work that you're doing. What will happen is that through this work, you will receive the reward of the inheritance it's an, it's not an ordinary reward my friend it's an inheritance from god wow and what does it mean abundance your desires my friend you receive in other words again let me clarify this god makes your desires come true through your excellent work yes and 
you might wonder, how was I able to do that? How was I able to travel? How was I able to receive the desire of my heart? My dream, my prayer of riding on airplanes and traveling all over the place. Well, the thing is, even if I didn't know enough yet during the time, okay? But when I studied well, when I uh, started to work, I, I gave it my best, you know, um, just excelling in everything I do. You know? Best effort, wholehearted effort. Somehow God recognized that. God honored that. And without me knowing it, I didn't know that I will get into that opportunity. But God brought me there through my work, my excellent work. And I was able to do the job. And yet, in doing the job, my prayer, my desire was granted. Riding on an airplane, traveling all over the place. Thank you, Jesus. My friend, some Christians believe that God has granted them their heart's desires, but could not believe that God will make them come true through them. You are different, my friend. You have this revelation. God will work out your desires and bring you your heart's desires, even your dreams, through your excellent work. And believe that you will grow, you will have wisdom, you will have the abilities, even if you didn't have before. Trust that God will give you that, that capability, that ability, and He will make you work excellently. And finally, finally, in closing, Here's the final verse that I will show you that will prove to you the kind of work that God wants you to do. In Philippians 4 verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. So take note, guys. This is the final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Why do you think God wants you to think of these things? Thoughts of whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. Think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy. Why do you think God wants you to think of these things? Well, the truth is, and remember this, my friend, and closing with this a very important principle and truth. Your excellent work will start thinking about excellent thoughts or excellent things, praiseworthy things. It starts from there. So when you start thinking about such things, excellent, pure, you know, amazing things that you know are excellent and praiseworthy, you will find your actions will follow naturally. And especially that you are doing it for the Lord. Wow, isn't that amazing? So, starting today, brothers and sisters, think about wonderful things of the Lord, excellent and praiseworthy things uh, that will glorify God. Think about such things. And then stay, align your heart, stay with the Lord, and align your desires. And surely, as promised by God, He will bring about, He will make your desires true in jesus name amen 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 i hope you're getting you're receiving these revelations my friend and to make sure that you are aligned and you, and you receive this truth pray this prayer with me the prayer of faith in jesus christ let's pray lord jesus you are my savior you suffered and died for me your wounds were for my healing your blood washed away all my sins you died but now alive in victory now I can live your life of victory. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you pray that prayer, I know that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've been restored to the original purpose that God designed you to be, to reign in life. Thank you, Jesus. And of course, to receive and enjoy the desires of your heart. So let's close with a prayer before I let you go. Abba Father, thank you so much for such a wonderful revelation that truly as we believe in you and as we grow in, in that revelation that you love us so much 
we enjoy life we enjoy your presence we start to grow in our love for you and as you promise you will grant us the desires of your of our heart and abba father you will do this through the excellence of our work as we work unto you as we work unto the lord as we honor you with our work it's our worship the work our excellent work is our act of worship for you and to you and so abba father thank you for granting the desires of our hearts and thank you for working it out and making it come true in jesus name amen 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 brothers and sisters enjoy the love of god believe that your desires are coming true in jesus name god bless you i'll see you again next time